What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where we learn how to reach people online, build a powerful personal brand, attract ideal clients, do all the fun stuff in sales and marketing so that you can sell more homes, help more people. We've got a very special guest with us today. Garrett Maroon is here. We're talking about why people don't refer you and how to fix it. So referrals <laughs> are not working for you. They should be working for you. People should be sending you business. If they're not, something is deeply, deeply gone horribly wrong, and we're going to fix it for you today. We're going to give you all the solutions so that you get referrals pouring from the heavens. Uh, as mana. So we're going to get into that in a second. Uh, but first, before we bring in Garrett, we've got Gene, the evil bald ninja is here. We'll bring him in a second as well. But first, before all of that, the junior grandmaster himself, very feisty today. I have no idea where the show is going to go because Greg is uh, whatever chain he was formerly attached to. Apparently he has now uh, been let off of that chain. Greg yeah. McDaniel, the junior grandmaster, what's up today? What up, brother? Good to see you back. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a great show. Get, cannot wait to see where Garrett's going to go with this one in, regard, in regards to uh, referrals and everything else. I, mean, I think in today's day and age, you know, referrals are going to be some of our biggest stuff. I mean, everybody's getting censored online in multiple different channels, and it's about building personal brand, personal referrals. And uh, why aren't people referring you? Is it because you wear Matt's aftershave or is it because you're bald like Gene? We just don't know. <laughs> First of all, my aftershave is delightful and you should be privileged if you got the same brand. How dare you? How then dare second you? of all, did you just take a shot at me as you're going to lead into me? Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, of course I, did. Yeah, I, I, I do have to point out, we do have the makings of another East, East Coast, West Coast Smackdown. So yeah. we've got... We got Philly Gene in the house. He's we've got Garrett, who's from Virginia Beach. So right. yeah, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a good we've got a good show. We'll see if we come out of this unscathed. How's that? Uh, first of all, Gene, how are you? And the evil bald ninja yourself today? <sighs> Look at me. How could I be any better? You see this? <laughs> What's going on here? Let me talk to you about it. <laughs> you mean because the beer in your glass is as dark as the shirt you're wearing? Is that is that a good day in Gene's world? It is pretty close. It is. All right. It is 2.07 on the East Coast. We started Friday a little early today. The NCAA tournament has kicked off, which makes my life very happy. It's going to be a good weekend, boys. What can I tell you? I can tell you I don't follow college basketball, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Is it March? Is there something happening in March? I feel like that's a thing. Is it Mad mad Marchness, I think is what they used to call it on Adam Carolla's show? Mad March. You nailed it. Okay, good. All right, let's bring Garrett in. Garrett Maroon, what's up today? How are you doing? Hey, great, man. And I will say it's something that Greg just said. I have done extensive research, Greg. There is a direct correlation to fewer referrals if you have less hair. So, I Gene, I, unfortunately, that is statistically documented that all people can't get referrals. So, <laughs> hold, on, hold on for a second. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's East that Coast too. versus West Coast. Yeah, Sorry, man. I should, that up. Man, I, I should be defending. I should be Ed too. Ed too, I Garrett. <laughs> I'm the only one here with a beer, by the way, just so we remind each other. Hey, I shaved. Okay, I, I, I do have. I have a. I have a face blanket. It might be a little bit light, but it is here. Okay, I was going to say that that used to be. I don't care. Years ago, there was research done that showed that people with facial hair get fewer clients, fewer referrals. Interesting. I don't know that really? that's the case anymore. Yeah, because now five o'clock shadows and beards are like the norm. So I bet that's yeah. not the case anymore. But when the norm <laughs> was, if you're a professional, you're clean shaven. Like people that had beards had a hard time. Like there was provable stats that they got they closed fewer sales wait a minute wait a minute what you're saying here is gene's doubly fucked he's, he's yes. bald and a beard yeah so, exactly oh I just my like, God. like i said to my wife thank god for my charisma yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly it's, it oozes it oozes like my aftershave all Not right the only thing oozing, but oh. we'll save that for later all right. Oh, okay. So, moving Garrett, forward quickly. <laughs> that's right. Moving forward quickly. So, Garrett, tell us. Uh, tell us a little bit. Just give us the overview. Uh, who you are, where you're at, and what do you? Uh, let's let's talk about your production last year because that's kind of an interesting topic to talk, to start off with. Yeah, man. So my background quickly. I've been in real estate since June of 2014. Uh, came in kind of kicking and screaming. My wife thought it'd be a good move. And I was totally against the idea <laughs> of 100% commission and thought this is no way it's going to work. My parents desperately tried to talk me out of it. And I did it anyways. And I'm really glad I did. You know, I came in and very quickly knew, I saw so I'm a Southeast Virginia area, but very quickly knew that if I'm going to do this, the only way I want to do it is by relationship. So I've never done a cold call, never done an open house or bought a lead or anything like that. It's literally just been 100% relationships. And I started with 40 people. I mean, that was it in my database. So not from here, didn't have a huge database, but just knew if I'm going to do this, this is how I want to do it. 
And so I came in and just worked really hard to master that one thing. And uh, the first six, it took me six months to, to sell anything. So I wasn't sure I was good at it, but I just kept trying. And eventually, thankfully, my first full year, I did 27 transactions. And then since 2016, I've done 50 every year, uh, all by relationship. And so for me, my database, the first year I did 50 was like 175 people. So it wasn't huge. For me, it's not been about going from 50 to a thousand. It's been, I want to keep doing 50 and just do it in less time. How do I do it quicker? Mm -hmm. How much, how much time do I really need to spend on doing this and how can I develop a better way to do it and figure it out? So yeah, last year was the first year I had anybody uh, on my team as an agent. I have a director of ops in TC, but now had an agent that brought on. So we did 75 transactions last year, all by referral. This year we're on pace for 80 to 90, all by relationship as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's quick background on me. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Very similar to, uh, I mean, how, how I've like my path with growing the agency, I, like I, I operate very much the same way. It's very much relationship based. Um, and I can, you know, like it can get you off to a slower start. We can talk about ways to maybe mitigate that, but it is interesting that you basically kept at it for that long because you had no, I don't know, where did the background come from where you decided to do it by relationship only and you were so firm in it that even after feeling like you were four or five, six months in and you weren't seeing all the dividends yet, what was it in your background that caused you to like stand firm in that? That's a good question. You know, I, my wife and I agreed, my wife, Rachel, we agreed that if in three months I hadn't sold anything, I'd quit. So okay. three months in, we're sitting at the dinner table and I said, I actually think I can figure this out. Can I get another three months? And thankfully we agreed, you know, and, and honestly, I think for me, Matt, it was, I took all the classes, you know, I came in and did what everybody does. I took the classes on cold calling and door knocking and Fizbo's and expires. And, and I just realized this is just not me. I just, I just can't do that. And even if I was going to be successful, because I really think anybody can learn anything, but if I was going to be successful at it, I wasn't going to be happy with the business I had built and certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't want to stay in there. So for me coming in early, I just was a relational person. I wanted to do it by caring for people well, and I really believed it was possible. And so honestly, it was just that belief that I really actually think this is doable, that I can build a big business and do it just by relationships, even though I have a small database. I was 27 too. So I was kind of stubborn and naive, you know, and I think that played in my advantage at the time as well, because I just didn't know what I didn't know. And so I just said, well, I'm going to do it. And it wasn't working. So it just forced me to say, well, if it's not working and I know it can, then I've got to learn something different, right? What else do I need to do? What else do I need to try to actually make this work? Cause it will work. I just needed to keep trying different things. So yeah, I think it just came from a place of that's really what I wanted to do is my deep felt belief that this is how it should be done for me personally. And so mm -hmm. I just kept trying. Greg, sounds a lot like how your dad got started. Yeah, it really did. I mean, he came out of there. Uh, he was in Boulder, Colorado, flat broke. Um, he married my mom, had to borrow fifty dollars from his, you know, now father-in-law to take his future, his now bride on a uh, honeymoon. Awkward. <laughs> but um, you know what? He went. He he started out in going, and he was doing door knocking in the snow in Boulder, Colorado, and he bought a fifty-dollar suit. And he just went out the mindset, like, everybody likes me. They just don't know me yet. And his brother had polio. And so he said, you know what? I'm a doctor. I have the cure for everybody. And he just went out there and made friends. And just literally his, his, his you know, recipe for success, he never stopped. His, mm -hmm. his competitors stopped. He just went and innovated. He was always the first guy with a cell phone. He was the first guy with everything. Uh, and just because it wasn't because he wanted to be vanity. It was just like, oh, this is a new technology. This is another opportunity to, to get in front of people and stuff like that. And he made relationships with more people than God, on God's green earth. And in, you know what he, what he, his biggest thing was? I don't have one near me right now, but he has this little box of candy. See his candy, it costs about six or $7 a box. And he would go and hand these things out to people on a, a every, every single during Christmas and the holidays. People would wait and call us if we did if they didn't get their box of candy because he made that relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And it's the most powerful thing on earth to go out there and just have a conversation, see what's going on in their lives. How can I help you? How can I build your business? How can I be a value add asset to you? Who can I connect you with? Like, you know, do you need a lawnmower, you know, guy to come over? Do you need a tree trimmer? Do you need an accountant? Do you need what? What do you need? How? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And that relationship, Garrett, like what you built, um, is incredible but a lot of people don't get referred because they don't have that mindset they go transactional and matt has beat my ass like a redheaded stepchild you know for the last several years in this show because he's always a greg you're transactional not relational i'm like shut up matt 
and, he, and, and he's like, shut up, Greg. And I'm like, I'm going to beat you. He's like, you, all right, you come down to San Diego and try it. I'm I was going to say, this is, all, this is all very only, only said from a safe distance of about a thousand miles away because Greg is a very large human being that I would never, ever poke the bear in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, yeah. I mean, Garrett, walk me through kind of your first steps. Like, what was your mm -hmm. first aha when it came to transactional versus rela relational? Because there's a huge divide there. And a lot of people, including myself, love to do transactional because I was like, I got my money. But then you fi figured out the pot of the gold. And kind of like this, you fire the pot of gold like this. Same kind of thing. There we go. I don't think I was as cool as your dad, but uh, you know, the reality for me was I, I heard pretty early on that the average person statistically knew 256 people. Mm -hmm. And so for me at that point, it was just a math equation, right? So statistically today, the average person knows 256 people. A referral is 92% chance it's going to convert versus Zillow's own numbers is 4%, which is probably even a little high. And so for me, it was a simple math equation. Okay. For example, I tell people all the time when I'm teaching or training, hey, you have 50 people in your database. Guess what? That means you're reaching 12,000 people. And if you get referred to any of them, you have a 92% chance of converting. Now, how many people, how, how long would it take you to cold call 12,000 people? <laughs> right. And even then, what would your conversion rate be at that point? Right. So to me, it was honestly, Greg, that was a huge part for me. It was just a simple math equation. And that was number one. And number two was very similar time frame was the speed to lead, which I totally get that and respect that. But I was just at the point where we've got a three-year-old and one-year-old, another one on the way. And I didn't at the time, Good but God. I was at the point where I didn't want to, right. I didn't want to have to uh, be at dinner and answer the phone really fast and build a business. I wanted people to call. I, I wanted to be a doctor. I, let me put it that way. I wanted to be a doctor where you call the doctor. You don't say, Hey doctor, I'm, I need to come see you. I'm coming to see you tomorrow night at eight. Be there. No, it's, <laughs> Hey, I really need to see the doctor and I like this guy. So when is he available? Like that's just who I wanted to be. And I figured that if I started that way, then it would really help me as opposed to building it a different way and then having to backtrack from that. So it was the relationships, knowing 256, that number, and then it was so math equation, and then it was, I don't want to jump on everything right away. I want people to respect the fact that if I can't care for my family, how can I care for your family? So let's work together on this. Yeah, I love it. You said something really powerful there, and I wrote, I'm wrote. i writing these numbers down because I didn't know those stats. The conver conversion rates are 96% for referrals and 4% for Zillow leads. Um, you said you want to be a, a doctor. I mean, I'm assuming that's fictitious. You actually didn't want to be a doctor. You just want to be the doctor Correct. of real estate, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to – so I actually wanted to be a neurosurgeon as a kid, and then I realized – no way I'm going to school that long and I'm not that smart. But so, but no, the, the, for me, it was, I wanted to act like a doctor in the sense of you call and you ask for the next available appointment. Whereas real estate agents, mm -hmm. it's, oh, well, when do you want to go? Like, I'll be there. Well, that, mm -hmm. that's just a terrible way to build your life. So I wanted to act like a doctor's office and say, this person's so valuable. When are they available? I'll come, I'll make it work. Right. People do that all the time. And so I just wanted to treat my own business that way too. Yeah. You know, when you say doctor, it's actually funny because I actually date a doctor. Um, and uh, she I, I came up with this thing with I'm trying to find the photo I'm going to put up on the screen as soon as I possibly find it on my on my phone and send it to myself. But we came up with the whole idea of doing an equity checkup, like you go in for a health checkup and have a funny photo of me with the stethoscope with a white, white, white coat on, like putting on, on a door, like, like doing an equity checkup. And so it's interesting to use that verbiage because. A lot of folks, I mean, you have to understand that you, when you go in there, you are their surgeon, you're their nurse, you're their, you're, you know, they're their, you're their everything when it comes to, you know, helping them through this thing. You have the goods in regards to knowing what the blank you're doing to help them sell this property. That's why you're so good at getting these in, intense amount of homes sold on, on a yearly basis. You know, when did that shift for you? I mean, when you're like, you're just like, eh, I'm just going to be a doctor. I mean, did you wake up one day? Did you, you know, do you say like, I, I'm, this is how I want to be? I mean, how did that work? I know you do a lot of coaching and training and speaking and all this stuff. So walk us through that because a lot of folks are very curious about that. Yeah. So, uh, and that's a great question. So April, 2016 is really when I started to, to really heavily focus in on how do I master and build a system for myself? So my father-in-law, my wife was working. My father-in-law went in for triple bypass surgery that went well, but 
tons of complications, ended up in the hospital for the next two and a half years before he passed away in uh, December 2018. So my wife left her job. Uh, oh, I had just hired my first two people that same month of April 2016. And so anyways, I'm, I'm running around crazy. And all of a sudden, oh, you guys went blank on my screen. Can you still hear me? Yep, we're good. Well, Keep on. Loud, loud and clear, brother. Yep. <laughs> Roger, go go for Garrett. <laughs> All right, we may we may have lost Garrett temporarily. I think there's uh, maybe a glitch on his yeah, end. Something goofy's yeah. going on. I'm getting all kinds yeah, yeah. of issues. Yeah. Are you really? I don't see yeah. you guys. Weird. I don't know if you can are, hear me. Are we, or not. are we talking? Are we talking yeah. about Eugene? Yeah. When it comes to Goofy, Goofy, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. So let's, so as as we get Garrett back, yeah. let's talk a little bit about in regards to kind of doing the diagnosis. And and Gene, I want you to jump in on this. Like, when, how are you, how can you diagnose? Um, you know, w- with a client, like if it's going to work, the marketing, and then that that translates into sales, and that's where the real estate agents come in. But I mean, when you talk to Matt, uh, the real estate agent who works for Remax, boo, um, and Bob, Bob, Bob well, yeah. well, that's he's on Bob's team. Okay. I got it. Got oh, okay. Okay. And then, uh, which have I told you guys about Doug? Oh, yes. I, yes. <laughs> so Doug is a shit stain of a human, uh, who decided, <laughs> who decided to, uh, try to you know, shame me in, in, in Nevada. And, uh, so now Jake and I make fun of Doug, uh, the real estate agent. Uh, but I mean, so he's like, Doug, Doug's the broker, Bob's the real estate agent and you're on Bob's team. So how are you going to be able to, um, market some of this stuff when you come to start being like the, the doctor of real estate. Well, I, you said a couple things. First of all, I want to, I definitely want to say that I have something called white coat syndrome. And what that means is that my, when I go to the doctors, my blood pressure increases. I get anxiety when I go to the me, doctor. Me and, too. Yeah. And the thought process of you in a white coat shoots my anxiety through the <laughs> fucking roof. Like, let me just say it out loud. However, I think it's, a good, I think it's, a, a really good marketing play. And let me give you, let me give you a, a, a scenario. So my wife, if you do not know, is a pharmacist. And recently what they did was they, I, I'm probably saying this wrong. So if you're out in the public and listen to this, it's a little bit wrong. I'm off. But basically what they did is they created a position where she talks to all the patients that they have that come in for prescriptions. And she tries to help them understand the way that the the meds that they're taking interact with each other. So, you know, if you have a, if you have an oncologist because you beat cancer and you have a cardiac doctor and you have your primary care physician and somebody that works on your back because you hurt yourself skiing, they all prescribe you meds. They don't talk to each other. Right. right. But there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, something that comes of that, which is your body may react a certain way to uh, negatively in a lot of cases to the, these medicines reacting to each other. So who to go to go to your pharmacist. The pharmacist sees all the prescriptions. They know how the medicines work and they can make a recommendation, you know, a, a quote unquote recommendation to go see your doctor again, because these two things don't play well together. Ask your doctor for this. Right. And I'm like, that's pretty genius. And what you just said to me made me think about that specialist in the real estate world. When you're a real estate agent, right? Mm-hmm. You, what do you get? You're getting all their financials. You know what their house is worth. You mm-hmm. know what their credit score is. Like, you know, all these things, right? What if you positioned yourself as that their financial asset concierge? Like when I come into the space, if I can help you with your credit and like, it's amazing to me still that people still don't know. I, I this is a funny meme on, on like Facebook. It's like when your buyers go and buy a car two days before closing, right? You've seen these, yeah. right? Cause now yep. it screws up the more. That's that's funny because it looks stupid to you, but there's people that do that because they don't really know how that affects things. Yep. Well, what if you're in a position to be that financial advocate for your fee? So you're helping them sell their house, but there's three other things you're looking at that maybe you can help them, you know, credit repair. I got this guy here. We can talk to you about your, you know, like, do you guys know that you can actually take your IRA and invest in real estate? You know that legally? Yeah. Right. I'm a lot, a lot of I've used to teach that and people would say to me, that's illegal. And I would go, here's the link on the IRS website that shows you how to do it. So if it's illegal, the IRS is complicit because they're telling you how to do it legally. <laughs> and people go, holy shit, I got a million dollars sitting there. I didn't know you could do that. Well, there's guidelines and rules and regs, right? There's a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you're in a position to have that knowledge and help your client with that, Mm-hmm. I think that could be powerful and certainly easily a marketing tool. You in the white coat, as much as that makes it pains me to think about, 
that's actually in oh Jesus. <laughs> That's for anyone listening. Greg has located <laughs> the visual and is disturbing. It's exactly what you imagine it. It's Greg in a white coat with a stethoscope putting it's it up to the door. Amazing is what it is. Oh my God! I will not be able to. I may not sleep tonight. I mean, honestly, I may not sleep. Tonight. <laughs> so the best part about this whole thing is that Garrett just rolled back in, not knowing yes. what the hell we were just talking about. To see yes, that. exactly. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about that, gentlemen. I don't know that I should have come back, but I'm it's all, oh my here. gosh. Oh no, we need you here. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other, otherwise, it's going to be Matt talking the entire time. All right, so here, here's what I want to dig into, Garrett. So there was there was a time when you it wasn't work it wasn't working as quickly as you wanted it to, but you you were pretty firm and steadfast. And this is the way I want to do business. This is the way I want to live my life, and I want to build a business around the life that I want. I think there's a ton of people out there that resonate with that. But you also realize that, hey, if it's not working as well or as fast as I wanted to, there must be something more that I need to learn. So it sounds like that's kind of what started you down the track where you ended up digging into like the psychology of referrals. So that's the part that I want to dig into is uh, you, start, you start going down that path. Where did you go? Where did you start looking for resources? Where were you looking for answers and what did you first find? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it, so I'll kind of walk you through some of the things I learned along the way, but one of the things very quickly for me, I was three months in, obviously I hadn't made any money was negative, but I hired a coach, you know, I just started mm -hmm. realizing, okay, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm certainly not going to get there as fast by myself. So I need someone to help me just hold me accountable to what I'm doing. So I hired a coach right away. I've always had a coach since then the past seven years, I started reading a book a week and just realized, okay, what's currently in my head is not getting me to where I need to go. And so I just need to learn right? I need to, mm -hmm. I need to learn my way out of this problem is really kind of how I felt and then put things into action. So yeah, I started to understand a lot of the psychology behind consumers and how they make decisions. But one of the things that stuck out to me immediately was, you know, here I am a relatively new agent wondering why are my friends not referring me? This doesn't make any sense. You know, one of my friends just didn't even use me. I don't understand. I'm an agent. And I started to dig into that, you know, really well, all I have learned is I failed. And so I had to figure out why that happened, right? And yeah. try to overcome that. So I realized very quickly through tons of studies and research that the reality is people can only recognize you in one context on average, right? Yeah. So if you see, I don't mean to use doctor all the time, but if I see my doctor at the grocery store, I might not recognize him. I might be like, oh, that's my doctor, right? Yeah, thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Put up that picture again, <laughs> right? You might not recognize them because you only understand them in one context. So here I am under tr trying to understand why my friends aren't referring me because they're not thinking of me in the context of real estate and business, right? So I had to come up with a plan, which for me was for the next six months, every time I reached out, I would say business and real estate in every conversation. So, hey, Matt, this is Garrett. Wondered if you had a quick minute to talk business, want to share with what's going on in the real estate market, mm. right? So I had to train them to think about me the way I was hoping they would think about me. That was huge. And that's continued to be huge for me as I continue to grow and build this. So that was number one. And that started working. Mm. Then I just decided that for me, I just, I really needed something that was more systematic. You know, there's a ton of great resources out there for how to work by referral calls, notes, Popeyes, client parties, all this stuff, right? It's not nothing that I teach is anything new, but for me, it was, I needed a system that made mm. it so I could literally execute hundred percent of the time every single month. And so I just set out to create a system that, you know, in, in December of 2020, I knew exactly what I was going to do in December, 2021 to the day what I was going to do, what I was going to say, who I was going to talk to from a relational perspective. And so for me, it was just making sure I had a real clarity on what I needed to do that was going to generate business. And all this study, all this research, all this learning, what I've realized, many things, but one of the biggest ahas for me has been people at the end of the day aren't as interested. They are, but they're less interested in what we know and they're more interested in the relationship, right? There's, there's so much research. So there's a really interesting study and I hope, Matt, this is answering your question, but there's a really interesting study that in 2005, they, they surveyed 10,000 people. The mm. average person in 2005 had 6.1 close relationships. They studied, or excuse me, surveyed those same 10,000 people 10 years later in 2015, average person, 2.2 close relationships. No and I way. Yeah. I imagine if they could interview those same people today, be fewer than two. And so for me, one of the biggest and, and then one of the saddest things that's going on in our world is we are very connected, but very, very few of us have real deep relationships where anybody, mm. any meaningful relationship, right? So a lot of what mm. I teach is, look. Your people are less starving for information. That's everywhere. They just need a relationship. Your job is to be one of those two or take that two to a three or even better, introduce them to community and take it two to 20, 
right? But that's your yeah. job. They really want yeah. the relationship, especially in COVID season. They're more alone than they ever have been, and they already were alone. And maybe now they're just recognizing it truly for the first time. So, you know, a lot of understanding what's really happening in the minds of consumers and just people in general has helped me understand, okay, how do I want to approach them and knowing how they need to be cared for? So a lot of that learning has led me to that. I love it. I I love you said he called it COVID season. Like it's like the flu season. Like, let's just be like this. Just be attractive to everybody, right? Come flying towards each other. Um, but I mean, I, it, it's weird. So here, Gary, here's a real question for you. I mean, I all of us joke around a lot, but I mean, I love your stats. I'm right. And when I look down, I'm not disrespecting them. I'm, I'm taking notes. Um, when it comes to personal relationships and you see, you know, the six to one now is a two to one. That's fucking horrifying. Mm-hmm. And it's probably only going to get worse. Right. Based when, on the what fact- was the time period? When did they first follow those 10,000 people, Gary? Yeah. 2005 and then 2005. 2015. So pre-social media pre-social and now we're 10 years deep into social media and our actual number of real human being connections is cut in half. Two to, no, wow. two to one. Two to one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, cut, six yeah, points down, down to like 2.2 two and a half. Yeah. So yeah, a little, little right, more yeah. than my half. That is, yeah, that's, that's insane. Uh, I, I never heard anything that really quantifies the effect of like how disconnecting social media is from a real social life outside of that you know like if you watch the social dilemma the big documentary here uh you know last year on on netflix you got like it like that told like the story of that but i've never heard it in in numbers like that 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 is horrifying um that is well, insane well here's the question i mean matt you and i have met less than a dozen times in human in human uh, yeah, form five or six in the last six years you've known each other yeah something like and, that and you count your you count your praises every single time you're like oh I, my god i get down on my knees and thank most of the gods in the universe that we <laughs> we're, met yeah we're never going to get talk about getting uh, you on your knees ever again but what's weird um, is you're you're on that list like i would say yeah. i have a handful of really close relationships and you're in that rarefied air of that top five of relationships, yeah. even though we don't get to hang out in person. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, it, there is a good point about the technology we have. You and I don't have to live in the same city, but we do talk consistently and we're on video and yes. we're hanging out. You know what I'm saying? You and I make an effort and just we have like regular structured communication. And I think, Garrett, that goes to your point about having a system we all have good intentions of keeping track of people, whether it's for business or for personal, like we all have those good intentions, but unless we're plugged into a system, those good intentions mostly don't get acted on. And so it ends up shriveling down to just those, that those two or three people that we do talk to consistently and everyone else seems like fall off the back of the wagon. Um, and I don't don't think people intend for it to be that way, but I think that's where something like your system comes in. I know I've had to build a system for myself for the exact same reason. Right. I am a very relational person. I have all kinds of good intentions to keep in touch with people. But if I don't have a system, it doesn't happen. Hmm. Yeah. And I think oh. absolutely. And, and one of the challenges with that, too, is so social media, for example, is we have bought into this idea that we we are relational and we work by relationship or work by referral or whatever when everyone knows us. And the mm-hmm. reality is, no, it's when you know them. And it's kind of like we've forgotten that, you know, we, we browse people like they're commodities and we look at what they do every day and we're like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And now they're getting to know me because I'm sharing what's going on in my life. And, you know, though that's important, the reality is everyone wants to be the hero in their own story. And if you never take time to understand the character that's in their story, which is them, then you don't know them. They don't know you. Right. Mm-hmm. We're just sharing what we want to share. There's no depth to that whatsoever. So, again, if you work by referral and you say it's because everybody knows who you are, well, that's not the answer. You need to know who they are. That's what they're looking for. Right. That's and so true. I think there's a huge mis just misguided from the idea of just social media. It's antisocial at the end of the day, right? Like it, it, and it makes me even sad to the point of you say, they, they say that you're the average of the five closest pe- or people closest to you, right? Well, mm-hmm. average person doesn't even have five people close to them. So no wonder we're struggling as a culture to, to grow and increase. And, you know, they did a study at Harvard that said over 50% of millennials don't even believe the American dream is possible anymore. Right, that's sad. That's what? terrifying to me. Yeah, over fifty percent of millennials don't even believe the American dream is possible. Right, and I think it's just average of all this struggles that's going on with relationships. Yeah. So, so it may also have to do with what they're teaching in Harvard. Just as a side note. Yeah, we're not going political math. <laughs> I'm not so, going down that path. I'm just so, pointing out. So, yeah, what yeah. what is the American dream? Let's define that. Oh, that's uh, that's, that's a slippery I'll let, slope. 
I'll let Gene take that one. I mean, yeah, right? come on, give us, give us the American <laughs> dream, sexy I, Philadelphian. Look, if you look at me, it's uh, my dream is to sit in a plush robe during the day, <laughs> drinking, drinking twelve dollar beer while I'm on in, the internet with you guys with no pants on. I mean, what is there anything better? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually had a, a call with an individual earlier today, and uh, she, uh, she and I, were, I actually brought her on a call with another potential client of mine. And <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? She's like. Sitting in pants with, I'm sitting in bed with no pants on. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's a graphic. Okay, so moving forward. <laughs> but I mean, so it, it goes back to that. Like, like she's actually a very, 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 very dear close friend. Like Matt, you're one of my dear folk, close friends. Gene, you're one of my close friends. So I have like Ashley, Gene, Jake, my buddy Casey, and then Matt, who pop off immediately as close friends. But you know what? Never met Gene. Never met Ashley. Met Jake once. Met Matt. Met Matt five times. What does that say about our society? What does it talk about when it comes to getting referrals? How can we, and Gary? This goes back to you. How can we leverage these digital relationships? Which this is becoming fucking normal. Which is so weird. I used to sit around with my buddies, smoke cigarettes, drink beer, do dumb shit, nearly get killed, and now we're life buddies for for forever. But now we can't do that anymore because life has just separated everybody. Um, how can you leverage technology to build the referrals to get the business? How do you do that? Yeah, that's a really good question, Greg. Honestly, my answer is I leverage technology to remind me to be in relationship in person, hear my voice, hear their voice, go drop something off at their door. You know, I, Andy Andrews, I think it was in the traveler's guide. He talks about how, if you want to be the number one best person in whatever field is out there, then you're going to always be climbing and scratching to try to be the best, right? Michael Jordan, the best basketball player ever. There's only going to ever be one. Instead, what if you find a field that no one's on? And so, for example, for me, the technology reminds me. So in April, I'm going to send a video text message to all my people. Hey, just thinking about you all this morning. I hope you're doing well. How's the first quarter of your year going? Right. Mm -hmm. Just engage, like ask questions. I'm curious about them. And in May, we drop, you know, I write handwritten notes. And, and one of the reasons is literally less than 0.7 percent of mail today is a handwritten note. So no one is reaching out to people other than a digital way. Right. So taking time to write. And then I'm also going to do Popeye gifts to some of my best people. And they're less than two dollars. I don't want to spend a lot of money. But the reality is, when was the last time anyone just randomly showed up at your door and dropped off a gift? right? Other than Amazon, but you ordered that. It just doesn't happen. And so it's the reality of, okay, how would I want to be cared for? And the closest people in my life, they still don't even do that. But wouldn't that be really nice if I showed up one day and someone said, you know what? I was just in the area. I was thinking about you. Hope you're doing well, man. Just dropped off something at your door. Wow. Yeah. Hey, like I appreciate that. Or they wrote me a handwritten note, right? Just, Hey, Garrett, thinking about you, check on you. Hope all is going well. Right. The fact that they took time to do that as opposed to send me a text or send me a Facebook message or whatever, there's incredible value in being different and there's incredible value. I think in going back to, right. And, and we talked about, so if you even see the correlation of the number of relationships people had before social media, well, the number of relationships people had when they actually showed up at your house, like you talked about Greg, or you had a landline and you called them and said, Hey, can I come over? I'm coming over at three. You want to get together, right? Mm -hmm. It's because they have been face to face in person voice to voice, not screen to screen. And there's, you know, it's great. Like I love, for example, what you all are doing, I would say is really valuable because you are face to face. You can see each other, right? Yep. There's great value in understanding human emotion and making a deep connection there. But if you all just emailed each other all day, you probably would not say he's one of your closest friends, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we just have traded what we think is an equal weighted relational touch. And it's just not true. We need to go back to the basis of how people want to be cared for. And, and I think we've got to understand that and build a system around it. Systematic relationship building is what I call it. And I have a date night with my wife every week. I spend time with my kids on purpose. I'm being systematic with that because I want to build those relationships. Now we got to take that to our business. It's mm -hmm. not bad for me to say, well, every month I know exactly what I'm going to do to touch these people that are in my database to care for them well, because guess what? I actually want to develop that relationship. So I have to remind myself because you mentioned Matt or I'll forget. And I don't yeah. want to forget because I actually want to build relationships. Yeah. So, so let's let's yeah. dive deep on something. You said something there, being different. Um, what would that look like? Because a lot of us, we, you, obviously, Garrett, you're a very intelligent human. Um, you know, we have the blue water, we have the red water hunting, right? Blue water, something nobody's doing. 
red water is what everybody else is doing. How do we step out of red water and go into blue water where nobody can, no, nobody's doing the same thing we're doing? Um, I would love to get your thoughts on that. I mean, Matt, what he does on a weekly basis is he offers out uh, free car washes on Saturday mornings and he, he'll come over and he will, he will wash your car at no cost in a speedo. So it's quite that's entertaining. Right. Step and up. I was going to say, that's yeah. That's what micro-famous means. Yeah, I wonder exactly. what micro-famous <laughs> meant, but that, that makes total sense now. Exactly. Absolutely yeah. total sense. It's, hey, it's cold I'm water. on your side, Gene. It's cold water. It's cold I'm just water. saying. It's, yeah. <laughs> My Thanks, God. Greg. Appreciate it that you're stepping me up. Now I'm doing car washes on Saturday mornings in a Speedo. That's, and, uh, that's a new element. That's a new and, element. I haven't heard that before. And for <laughs> Garrett, that's where Micro Famous came from. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> thus, thus Micro Famous was born. Oh, my God. All right. So, Gary, you reeled off a, a couple of them. You talk about being different, going where the blue ocean is. Um, so you're talking about handwritten notes. Um, and you're talking about, in your case, you're doing true handwritten notes. There is ways to kind of mimic it, which is part of, partly what I do. I've got a little system for that where my, my handwriting literally is so bad from like years of playing drums and carpal tunnel and all that jazz. Like nobody wants to get my handwritten, really <laughs> handwritten notes because you couldn't, it wouldn't be legible anyway. Oh, well, by, um, by the way, guys, when you actually get a note from Matt, um, this is not a joke. And this is a playoff on the micro famous thing. He writes so incredibly small. Oh, my uh, real is, handwriting? Yeah, you're, it's so incredibly small. It's not even funny. Like, you can't, I, I look at him like, what the fuck is it's called shorthand. Hand. Shorthand. No, it's not shorthand. It's just <laughs> tiny. I, I drove, I drove, uh, the one year I went to high school, I drove my, uh, my teachers nuts with that. Um, but yeah, so, so I do something where I, so I literally, like, I have a VA in the, in the Philippines, right? She's my executive assistant. So I voxer her. Like when I want to send somebody a, a note, we have we have send out cards. She has the login access to my account. We have a we have a format, and so all I do it is a it is a very personal note because what I'm doing is I'm getting on and I'm telling her exactly what I want her to say. So I vox or her a voice message to say, "Hey, tell Garrett thanks so much for coming on the show. You were awesome. Let me know how I can help you, who I can introduce you to. Talk to you soon, Matt." And then she's kind of sending the card out but the message is from me tailored to each of those people so like you talk about you know like combining technology to make it easier to be a human being like that's i kind of found a little, little shortcut so you're doing actual handwritten notes what else what else do you have that that helps you kind of bring something different that people aren't expecting yeah so and i would say again it's nothing new right it's not the principles are always the same maybe the tactics are a little bit different but this is the way humans have desired to be cared for for ever since the beginning, right? It's human relationship, human contact. So again, for us, it's nothing significantly different. The Yes, writing notes, dropping off Popeye gifts. The consistency is far different than most agents. And literally, statistically, 91% of clients would refer their agent. Only 11% of the agents ever stay in touch with them. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah. So the consistency alone makes it stand out. But then, for example, we shifted to, and, and I know a lot of agents and have helped a lot of agents, and most of them didn't make a shift. They kind of just let COVID shut them down, but we shifted to, we started, we host four client parties a year and we started doing virtual client parties. We did a virtual wine tasting. We did a virtual movie night. We did a virtual uh, photo shoot, right? We did all kinds of things just for our clients to feel like they were being cared for. And it was literally a result of sitting around, spending my time legitimately sitting there thinking, okay, how can we help them feel like they're not alone? That's what I want to understand. And that's what I want to offer these people that I do genuinely care about in my database. So, you know, Matt, I, I don't know that we're playing on a completely different field because there are plenty of other people there. I think the difference for us is it is not just a system where we just do what we have to do. It is literally for me. That's why I like actually writing my own notes, though it takes a long time. It's because mm -hmm. it makes me think about them. And hmm. in business, at least, I think one of the biggest challenges that I see is I help people and different agents around the country is just the reality of, well, they've kind of outsourced thinking of their people. And, you know, I couldn't yes. outsource thinking which about my wife. Which is what they want, and, by the way. Yeah, which is what they want. Yeah. yeah. And, and I couldn't outsource thinking about my wife and saying, somebody else come up with what I need to do. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, sometimes I look up resources and try to find ideas, whatever. But, you know, I can't just find someone else to build the relationship. It needs to come mm -hmm. from me. And so a big part of that for me is just caring for people by actually thinking they don't know that I'm doing it. But I'm sitting there thinking, I know the people in my database. What would be encouraging to them? How can I serve them? And I really want to understand that. And then I'm going to execute by being consistently uh, there and never talking about real estate. We don't talk about real estate ever. Hmm. You yeah. know, my, my dad used to do something really funny. 
He and Matt always makes fun of me because I have these yellow pads that are literally everywhere. He calls them my Hobbit pads. Um, and my dad, I got it from my dad. And what he would do, it would crack me up. He'd be in his office, and he would sit there and he would just pick up the phone. He because that, that was his database. Like this is where he kind of ran his his entire business, right? Mm -hmm. And he would just say, okay, you know, here's a list of X amount of people, right? And he would just call down the list and be like, Garrett. Greg McDaniel, how are you, man? I was driving past your house the other day. Uh, I, I drove her, drove past your house you know, a few minutes ago, and I thought of you. I uh, just wanted to kind of see how you're doing. Like, what's going on? Now, given he never drove past their house, he was just, was just reading off a yellow pad, but it gave the people the sense of like, oh my God, you're thinking about me. Like, how's life? How's Stacy the wife? You know, you know, how are the kiddos? You know, you know, for Matt, you know, when we come to the kiddos, we're going to have, are, how, how's the dialysis going? <laughs> You know, the, the whole nine yards, you know, are they still, you're still kicking, but you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and he got a lot of business from it because he just was, he related to them. Mm. It was, that wasn't selling. It was like what you're talking about. Just like, dude, COVID sucks balls on a hot day after a long run. You know, what can I do to bring value to you? Gene. And I think. Gene, did you, Gene, did, did, did you really do that? COVID. That's right. <laughs> Gene's like, I know about that. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, Greg, and, and Greg, that is such a good point leading to the psychology of understanding humans, right? And how they make decisions. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll play off what you just said. So uh, a famous football college football coach, Lee Holtz, uh, Lou Holtz, excuse me. He always said, People ask three questions when they're making a buying decision. For us, it's deciding if we're an agent, if they're an agent. For him, it was playing for him, right? Whatever else. But number one, can I trust you? Number two, are you good at what you do? And number three, do you care about me? Can I trust you? Are you good at what you do? Do you care about me? And number one, one of the biggest challenges that agents and people in general misunderstand is we always go for, here's why I'm good at what I do. Let me explain to you why I'm a better agent than Matt. Let me explain mm -hmm. to you why I'm the best agent in our region, right? And let me tell you all about my 500 point marketing plan, whatever it is. And we lead with that and we forget trust and we forget care. Now, if you dig in even deeper than that, and you actually start to understand the psychology and the studies and the surveys and everything that they've done is that the average consumer cannot understand a field outside of their own, cannot understand more than a two out of 10 level. Right. Yeah. So when you try to compete on, are you the best one out there? They have no way to determine I'm an agent. I don't even know if I'm the best agent, right? I don't think I am, but I don't even know how to determine that. And so, but yet we lead with that as if a consumer can understand instead, what all of these studies prove is if you leave and that person can tell that they can trust you and you care about them, then their natural assumption is you're good at what you do. Now, you should be good at what you do. But mm -hmm. when you try to answer question number two, you don't answer any of them. When you answer question one and three, you actually answer all three. And so we misunderstand that. I talk about my dentist all the time. I don't know if someone were to honestly ask if my dentist is the best dentist in my city. I have no idea. I don't even know how to determine that, right? I'm not smart enough to figure that out and certainly not going to take the time to figure out. So all I'm able to do is I really think he cares about me. I really trust his opinion. And so therefore, I'm just going to keep coming, right? There's no reason for me not to. We make easier decisions than maybe we like to admit and consumers make easier decisions than maybe we like to admit. And so stop leading with the one question that no one knows how to answer properly. Instead, can I trust you? And do you care about me? You can answer those by being consistent in contact, by asking a lot of questions, by listening well, right? And that's what it takes for me. I understood that early on just from study and research, my own personal life, and literally in seven years have a hundred percent conversion rate with buyers and a 95% conversion rate with sellers. And I genuinely believe that it's because all of these things that have been built through the trust, through the care, I show up because it's a referral and they already say, you can trust him, right? He's going to take good care of you. So I already have those answered. And then all I got to do is not blow it and they're going to hire me, right? Because yeah. I don't need to be the best agent. I want to be the best agent, but they don't need to understand what makes me better than anybody else. It doesn't matter in their mind, right? Yeah. I need to get the job done. That's what they want, but they trust me and, they, and I can uh, prove to them that I care. And that's really what it is. So we just answer the wrong question. Dude, I love it. Yeah, fucking we need to, love that. We need to snip that out. That's one of the best things. That's that's oh one of the God, best yeah. rants that's been on the show. Oh, that, like 100%. Honest, no, no, no. It really was. I mean, East Coast. I, 100%. East Coast. Yeah, that's East Coast love. But oh, I think shut up. All right, no look, show no, no, show look. over. We're done. <laughs> look, look, right, we're you, there's nobody across this country that can argue with anything that he just said. Like, no. 
it's 1 million percent built on trust. And once I have that foundation of trust, the rest of the shit falls into place. As long as you don't break that trust by doing something egregious, hmm. the rest, the rest is like you said, I always tell people all the time, if, if you do these things properly and you get out to a listing appointment, your job is to not screw it up. Yeah. Like don't make a comment about their ugly kid or something racist. They're going to fire you. But if, if you're out there because of these reasons we're talking about, you're there for a reason and people wouldn't invite you out if there was in most cases, if there wasn't a semblance of trust. And I think you're right. If you build that foundation on that, no matter what business you're in, right. But especially the one where the highest dollar value is being transacted. But, and that, and that's what it is. Do I, and I do that I, as you were talking, I'm thinking about my daily activities and I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody on pitching me a service or pitching me something they want to do. And I go, I don't need to know the details. You and I are there already. We're good. Just handle it. I trust you to do it. And yeah. that's so much easier than I got to do. Like you said, I got to do the research. Is he going to hurt my gums? Is it, is he going to make me bleed? Is, does he have the right equipment? Where did he graduate from? No, no, no. He made me feel good. He told me about all this stuff, right? Like, you know, I, I get it and I trust him. And therefore I'll let this dude work on my molars, whatever. Oh, I, have, I have so <laughs> many jokes. Yeah. Which, which I know. And I, so we'll try to contain ourselves. <laughs> no, and I was specific about not saying certain yeah. things because it would have opened it wide open. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, I, will, I will give Gene a brief plug because one of the ways uh, in this no day and age that we do build trust online is by showing up consistently with content. And Gene, that's one of the things that you do for your clients that are in real estate is I think one of the things that's tough for agents to do is to be present like online in a way that actually builds trust with their people because most people aren't consistent enough with anything that they do. Uh, and that's one of the things that you help people do is take chunks of content, chunk that into smaller chunks, put it in the places where they need to be active so that they're there longer, you know, more consistently. So I think there, there's an element there where you know, there, there's a lot of things that I don't like about social media, but if you can use a service like jeans to show up consistently, that in itself will build trust. Uh, I think right. I just lost my camera. You feed. did lose your, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. This is uh, it's the kids, the cam link. Anyway, I'll be, I'll be back in a second, but uh, Garrett, before we go, uh, I want to get uh, a round of how do people get in touch with you? So let's start with you. And then I want to close out with your daily activities. So where do people go to connect and learn more about you and your coaching? Yeah. So, and, and let me also say, Greg, I appreciate all the pop-ups. It's way the most interesting interview I've ever done because you just pop up random pictures on the screen. <laughs> That's never happened before. So I, I well, appreciate it very much. Well, it's I am the Batman hey, of real estate. Yes. I mean, that's just how it works. And I just, I just consistently just want to, you know, stay, keep calm and be happy. So no big deal. That's amazing. I don't know how you and Matt get anything done when you guys talk, but it's incredible. So I appreciate yeah, it. We yeah, don't. I mean, yeah, right. So no, I appreciate that question, Matt. I mean, probably the best way. So our training company is called business by referral, believe it or not. So our website is businessbyreferral.co, not .com, .co. So businessbyreferral.co. That's the best way they can contact us directly there. They can check out what we're doing right there. They can figure all that stuff out for themselves as well. Did I, nice. Oh, did you guys did you guys lose me for there for a second? No, no, no you're oh, good. okay. I'll go. I was the only one on the screen for a second. Yeah. So no, so you mean like, you mean like this? Like, like, yeah. 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 Like Greg that. Oh, back. Greg's messing with me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, well, it, it puts you uh, a spotlight, you. But yes, it makes yeah, you feel like you're the only one in the room. On the yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> right. All right. So uh, Gene, that. make sure make sure people check out GeneVolpe.com. As always, go to GetMicroFamous.com. Mm -hmm. You can get the uh, free digital book there. You can uh, connect to the podcast there. Uh, Greg, what's the best way if people are interested in joining up with us and our EXP team? They want to work virtually from home if they want to save money on their commission they want to build passive income all that fun stuff that comes to joining a brokerage that's actually built uh, if you could have built a brokerage from the ground up for the COVID era you could not ask for anything better than the xp so greg how do people learn about that you just get a hold of me guys give me go ahead and give me a call 925 915 1978 um yes uh we are uh looking to do some hiring and we're going to be working with a company called clever leads and we got a trucking uh side that's coming out which is absolutely insane uh you're going to go from you know a, a couple of lone wolves to a big old pack of wolves uh when it comes to your the way you run your business but we are here to help and support you guys um and yeah just anything i can do to help and support you guys so 925 915 1978 we are here for you guys so um let's uh let's wrap this bad boy up but well, uh, one final question garrett i want to know what your daily routine what, what's your average day look like 
relation and where does the relationship building activities fit into the rest of your day? Yeah. So for like on my work day, mm -hmm. yeah. no, Saturday. So, yeah, Saturday, <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm like, I get up and I exercise. So, um, yeah. So my work day, so I, so literally what I do every month and I, it's planned in advance. I've got my calendar sitting next to me. Yeah. That is probably me. I hate running. Uh, so my work, my, my month is planned in advance. I pick 10 days a month to lead generate and I do it for an hour a day. Um, and that's it. So, you know, like for example, when I'm doing in the, in April, I'm going to do uh, video text messages to everybody. It's basically the same thing. It's 20 seconds long. It'll take me like three hours to send something to all 300 people. And then I'm done for the month. So mm. it's not a lot, mm. you know, it's, that's the beauty of it. In my opinion, the reason I can work less than 20 hours a week and build another business is, and spend time with my family is you don't have to be because unfortunately our society is so low on the actual relational relational mirror, right? That if you just do a few things that are different, then you're going to stand out and they're going to remember you, right? People, if they like you and trust you, they want you to succeed. They're going to refer you. I mean, it's that simple. So yeah, showing up every month. Most people in our lives don't do that, right? Yeah. So it doesn't take a ton to just really be intentional about caring for them. So it's not a lot, Matt, but yeah, I pick in advance 10 days that I'm going to do it if I need all 10 days and give myself an hour each day and show up. Mm -hmm. First thing I do, do that. And then I move on with my day. Love it. That's awesome. Cool, man. Va fantastic. Hopefully people go check out the coaching program, get into your world, get connected with you. Uh, it's definitely, it, it's something we've talked about on, on the show a lot over the years. We've had some great guests that have shared, you know, different strategies for referrals, but you're right. It's, it all comes down to figuring out that system that works for you. And for you, you've got those 10 days where you plan out. It might be something different for somebody else, but we all need that system. Otherwise, good intentions go unacted upon. So um, let's finish out with uh, selecting the color of the bow that will wrap around this episode. And I'm going to, uh, I'm making a, I'm making an executive order, Greg. So it's oh. very, yes, oh, it's very timely. Damn. Yeah, executive order on this on this bow color. Uh, Garrett, let's go Garrett. With, um, he's so bossy. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with just about how interesting politics is right now, which is beige. Let's wrap a nice beige wow. bow around this uh, around this episode. How is that, Greg? I think I want to puke in my mouth. It, 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 it. <laughs> um, all right, guys, there it is. Garrett, hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Dude, thank you are a knowledge me. bomb, motherfucker. I, I, we, we are definitely going to have you back on. I want to connect with you offline. I really enjoy it. And I got the nose pinch from Matt right there. Finally yeah. got that from him. You know, we almost had an episode that Garrett could share with people. And then <laughs> Greg happened in the last My mom cannot ago. listen to this one. That's exactly. right. Yes, she, she can. listen all the way till the end. She can yeah. listen all the way through just at the last 30 seconds. Just no more. <laughs> right. um, I appreciate yeah. you guys having me. In all honesty, Garrett, seriously, brother. I mean, I really, I, you have a ton of knowledge. I love the stats that are coming out of your brain. Um, I, I've literally been taking, that's not a joke. This is, these are fresh notes, taking notes on the show. Um, so I thank you for your time. Truly do. Yeah, you're, you're, thank you're, you guys. You're, you are absolutely incredible. Yeah. Guys, go give us a five-star, not a two-star review in every single place you guys listen to your podcast. Mention Garrett and everything. Don't mention Matt because he has a little black piece of coal that's his heart, and uh, he doesn't want to talk to you, and we love him for that. Gene, Vol the, the Volopi, uh, you know, he's down there drinking beer, having fun on a Friday uh, afternoon, but he's an amazing human being. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, until next time, guys, peace out, ninjas. We're gone.